Good evening friends. Uh, today I am here to discuss about the procedure, particularly the criminal procedure. I will show you some photos before I begin the discussion. Here you will find in this photo we had the then president of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, and the lady, the lady to whom the then president was giving the National Thesis Award is Kwarakpam Sunita Devi. She is presently the headmistress of the school and the name of the school is uh, Vairodhan Maxwell Hindi Primary School in Nepal in Manipur. Now, she was one of the teachers, one out of 350 teachers who were awarded by the president on 5th of September 2014, meaning on the teacher's day. Again, we have the same lady headmistress, Mrs. Sunita Devi here, along with the Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. And this lady headmistress, in fact, the Manipuri from Imphal, Manipur, who is right now the headmistress of Vairodhan Maxwell Hindi Primary School, was a few days ago picked up by the Manipur police in broad daylight. And these, of course, were lady police personnel. And here you find the headmistress, Mrs. Sunita Devi. And the photo clearly depicts that the headmistress, the lady headmistress was restrained, was forced, and she was picked up. Again, I will show you one more photo, a very interesting photo, interesting one. The students, the students in Manipur, they were kept behind the bar. In fact, they were not merely kept there, they were locked up. You will find here two locks, and these locks are not, these are not merely bolted, these are locked. Not merely by one lock, but by two locks. And this happened a few days ago, along with the incident, which has the same, or rather, which may or may not, but which almost took place within a day or two, uh, in the last few days. Now here, this is one photo. So here I am going to discuss about these two photos. The two photos. What are the two photos? The first photo, a lady had mistress, or rather a woman, being picked up by the state police force and then the students in a lockup. This happened just a few days ago in the capital city of Manipur, Impal. Well, there are two questions. There are two simple legal questions, in fact. And once we go deeply into the legality of this, then it is not so simple that it appears to be. First, when you put someone behind a bar, meaning in a locker, in a police station, or when you pick up someone, I mean, when police go and pick up someone, then what happens? You need to know two things, rather two fundamental questions arise. And the first one is, what is the offence? What was the offence done by these people, by the lady headmistress or by those students who were put behind the bar? Secondly, Again, a very fundamental question. Were those people, I mean the lady who was picked up by the state police and those students who were put behind the bar, who were in fact locked up, were they actually arrested in a legal term, in a legal sense, were they arrested or kept in a preventive detention? Now, these two questions, what are their offences? Or what were they often their offenses and were they arrested or were they came under the preventive detention these two questions are what i'm going to discuss today 
what happens supposing if they have done some offenses with their lady headmistress or those students then of course the police ought to tell us I mean not to us in a sense but at least to them that what were their offenses they have a right to know whether the offenses uh, 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 were serious in nature or they were not serious in nature if the offenses were serious in nature they are called as cognizable offense and if it is not serious in nature they are considered to be non cognizable in nature so what happens like you talk about a uh, murder you talk about uh, let's say dowry date then this is serious in nature this is serious crime and therefore it comes under cognizable offense wherein a fire has to be lost and in that process you in fact don't need a warrant or order from the magistrate the police can just go and and pick up but then the police also has to mandatorily file an fir and this is as per the supreme court's directive now it is mandatory in nature the police cannot say that no we have forgotten to file an fir once you go and pick up someone and say the offense created is cognizable in nature but again supposing if those students or the lady had mistress they were pick up on the charge of let's say non cognizable meaning not not serious in nature then what happens before you do that before the police does that the police has to bring out the prior warrant or order of a magistrate then only they can pick up then only they can say that yes i'm going to start the investigation otherwise how can the police go and pick up someone so what crime or what offenses they have done they here meaning the lady had mistress or the students who were lock up this is not my concern because i cannot say because i am not a prosecutor the prosecution has to say here the prosecution the state has to identify has to present that they were charged under these these sections of ipc indian penal code then only will be able to reply what crimes they have done then the court proceedings perhaps may take place but as of now i don't know what they have done and we also are in no position to even speculate that they could have done something else so right now we don't know what is offense that they actually have committed because the prosecution has not told us the prosecution i don't know whether the prosecution has even told this lady uh, had mistress or the students out there so what happens then the next question is were they actually arrested or were they kept under preventive detention now if you say that the police is going to arrest you obviously police can't just come and arrest you just like that there has to be a rule the arrest by police officer is clearly laid down in section 41 of crpc criminal procedure code now if police is going to come and put you under preventive detention then the procedure for that is also laid down in section 149 section 152 of crpc so what happens is when police goes there and says that you are going to be arrested because you have done a cognizable offense then of course without any requirement of magistrate's warrant or order under section 41 under one of section 41 of course it can be arrested but then again it says that in the supreme court judgment of latika kumari versus government of uttar pradesh in 2014 it says that and in fact there is a supreme court honorable supreme court guidelines which says that fir is mandated fir has to be there for every cognizable offense and it is also written very clearly it goes along with section 154 section 154 of the crpc now what happens in this sections we may say that we don't know 
But when it comes in terms of court proceedings, we cannot actually say that we really do know. Because what happens is, in section 154 and 155 of Criminal Procedure Court, it clearly mentions about information in cognizable cases in case of section 154 and in case of section 155 it mentions about information as to non-cognizable cases and investigation of such cases well i'll not go into the nitty-gritty of, of this but in a very simple and layman's version i must say that there's a judgment there's a judgment which has come and the judgment uh, is from Honorable Supreme Court. It came in 2010. It is Central Bureau of Investigation versus Kisod Singh. 2010 Supreme Court. It says that when a person is brought to the police station and locked up there, obviously he is under arrest. So, this is the photo. When these students, I mean when these persons are brought, I mean they are brought, they were they were brought to the police station and they were locked up. I'm not saying that. the photo is saying this. So they were brought to the police station and they were locked up and obviously they were under arrest. Now if they were under arrest, arrest under what offense? The prosecution has to tell us what crime they have done, what section were applied, was their fire laws? We don't know. I don't know whether the government knows about it. And if it is there, at least these people need to be informed. So, the question remains is, let's say that if there was no arrest and if there was no preventive detention and they were just kept there and they were released, of course, because the newspaper a report said that uh, they were released maybe uh, on the next day or within some hours. I really don't know the exact news because, but they were released. So what happens after they release? The question remains is, still, were they arrested or were they kept under preventive detention? And if there was no arrest and if there was no preventive detention, then why were they pick up? Then why was the lady headmistress pick up in a broad daylight? Why were those students kept in a lockup? Lockup in a police station is not a cafe. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not a cafeteria where one goes and uh, uh, have coffee with his friends. This is not a dwelling place. It's not a place where the visitors come and reside or rather interact and have a chat. So, in a way, in a, on a very serious note, if there was no arrest and if there was no preventive detention, then what happened? Then why was the state police, I mean the state, why was the police going and picking up the lady and why were those students kept in a police station? So, in fact, these police officers or these police personnel, they are there not by the virtue of someone's whims or offenses, but they are there because of the service rules. What happens in section 166 of Indian Penal Code, IPC, again it says about public servants disobeying law. So it says that in section 166 of IPC, if you go through it, it says public servant disobeying law with intent to cause injury to any person. I'll just read out. Whoever being a public servant knowingly disobeys any direction of the law as to the way in which he is to conduct himself as public servant, intending to cause or knowing it to be likely that he will by such disobedience cause injury to any person shall be punished with simple imprisonment for a term which may extend to one year or with fine or with court. So, 
The question remains is here, the police were there and they were the officers and the personnel of the police, they were there as public servants. And what were they doing there? When they went there, they pick up a lady, they put students behind the bar and then if they don't have anything to say on arrest or on preventive detention, then what were they doing? When it, were not they dissolving the law, were not they dissolving the criminal procedure and in fact if it is so, I didn't mean they were, they were actually disobeying but I mean in fact if they did that then why should not an inquiry or why should not a case be filed against such activity or rather such act which tantamounts to dissolving law by a public servant and it is very much uh, uh, a part of Indian Penal Code because it is clearly mentioned in section 166 of IPC. Now let's not go into the criminal procedure for the time being and if we accept that there was no arrest, there was no preventive detention and of course they were just picked up by the state police and they were kept there for some few hours and then after that they were released. And if that is so, the further question is, what were those police officers or those police personnel? Because when I say police officers, when I say police personnel, I don't mean those individuals. I mean in a very strict sense, the state, the state of Manipur. What were they doing there? Were they doing things which were legal in nature? Were they following the criminal procedures legally? Were they obeying the law? Were they obeying the service rules? If not, then what were they doing? Were they restraining someone? Were they confining some people? They restrain a lady? I'm not saying it. The photograph says that. The lady? If anyone says that this lady was not restrained by seeing this, I mean, this photograph, then I don't know what is the meaning of restraint. So this lady was restrained, forcibly taken by the state. And where they put, they were, they were, they were put in the lockup. They were confined in these four walls with two locks. So, the question is, this restraint, restraining and this confinement, this restraining, restraint and confinement, were they done legally or not? If not, then they are liable to punishment under section 339 of IPC and 340 of IPC. Because under Section 339 of IPC, it talks about wrongful restraint and under Section 340 of IPC, it talks about wrongful confinement. So again, let's in fact even forget this and let's somehow try to forgive. I don't know whether we'll be able to forgive, but let's somehow try to forgive this a very usual practice of state police forces in our state of Manipur. I mean, police will come and pick you up and put behind the bar for some time, maybe for a few hours, and the next, before the sun rises in the next morning, you will be released, and the entire people will be happy. In the meantime, we'll try calling up your relative or your friend who happens to be a, a senior police officer, or if you have some relative who happens to be a minister or some influential bureaucrat or powerful people, you call them up and you try to uh, ensure that the, the person behind the bar gets released. And what happens to the legality? What happens to the criminal procedure parts? The procedure, when I talk procedure, I mean the legal criminal procedure. What happens to that? So, let's in fact even forget this because this is something, a very common practice in our state of money. That somebody gets picked up by the state, by the state police or by any force and they are put behind the bar and then within some few hours, maybe sometime even after 24 hours, in some cases before 24 hours, they are released. And we don't know. 
for what crime they were arrested, for what crime they were picked up, whether those crimes were cognizable in nature, if cognizable, whether a fire was there or not, if non-cognizable, did they ever take the prior permission, order or warrant from the magistrate? We don't know anything about that. So if, in fact, let's forget all this for a time. But at the end, what happens? Again, I'll bring back to these two photos. What happened to these? A lady. The lady had mistress who was with the prime minister and who was with the former president of India. What is happening to the reputation of this great academician, the primary school teacher, the lady had mistress? Who will take care of her reputation? Is her reputation in jeopardy or shall we just accept it that it is just a usual practice in our society and therefore it's better not to raise such issues? Well, her reputation is the reputation of the entire teaching community of the whole world. It's not the question of merely a primary school teacher of one school out there in the city in Palo Alto. We were talking about the teachers as a whole, right from philosopher Socrates to Plato, Aristotle. But the great Aristotle was not there. The great Alexander will not have been there. And Aristotle will not have been possible. Had Plato not been there, and Plato would also not have been possible if Socrates were not there. So the teachers, the role of teachers in society are so immense since the dawn of human civilization that they just can't be merely wiped out and they just can't be met to, to project in society in a very buffoonery state of affairs. They need to be honoured both implicitly and explicitly. And therefore, I have to raise this issue on a very, very serious note. I was also a school teacher, but I raised this issue more as a school teacher. But as someone who is legally conscious and also who wants to drive the society into a legal consciousness, and therefore, I must say that not only about a defamation, Defaming this lady had mistress, but also defaming the life, the future prospects of these students, these devoted students, who will tomorrow be in the bureaucracy, who will tomorrow even join the army, who will even tomorrow become scientists, who will even tomorrow become a great artist, a great intellectual, a great academician. What about their fame, their reputation? The reputation of these students and the reputation of this lady headmistress, a teacher. Well, it only depicts what society we are right now evolving. And therefore, it is a high concern for all of us, particularly those who control the state government, they must realize that the public are not there as mere puppets. The public are not there as someone who do not know anything about law. The youths of Manipur, the public of Manipur, the people of Manipur are becoming legally conscious and they are becoming politically decisive. And it is a high time the state must, in fact, own a rule of law. Had the state own a rule of law, then the state will be able to tell the society, tell the whole nation that the crimes that these people have committed and the sections under which these people were kept behind the bar or arrested or if under preventive detention. If the state followed rule of law, then the state should be in the position to tell us that the offences committed by them were cognizable in nature or non-cognizable in nature. If they were cognizable in nature, the state should be able to produce a fire to us. Because the fire is the person. And if it was non 
cognizable in nature, then the state should be able to tell us, should be able to share with us the prior warrant for order of registry. So friends, it's a very serious, sorry state of affairs today in our society, in our state of Manipur, that uh, this culture of silence is no more there. I've seen that I just posted one video a few days ago and within one day, within 24 hours, it was viewed by almost 10,000 people. I mean, 10,000 viewers. And I really don't know, I mean, uh, many of the viewers uh, must be those even whom I have never met in my life and whom in fact I also don't know. But this clearly shows that our people, our youths, the people of our state are right now becoming legally conscious. They are conscious of their legal, constitutional, democratic rights and they just can't be taken away just like that. And therefore, the state must also wake up and the state must also follow the rule of law. Aina Haji, Akhoigi, Mayam, the Hajining Badi, Tau Kriba, Ha Kriba, Pun Kriba, Koigi, Uza, Ming Mina Panzarabada, Parapam Sunita Devi, Adubai, Koigi Satra, Kara, Puliski, look up the Laydena, Tom Koigi. Ani Pan Lozen, the Nata River Sea Ying Ying Bada Yam and Nusati Rigani. Hek the police in Laga, you remember the Hek the Sangaga, Natraga school among the monk, Hek the Sangaga, Natraga Lady was Hadraka, Hek the Paga, like a Hek the Puraga, look up the Tamaga Tomozelaga, a diggy to Pungara Lady Hek, Tadu Oga Masira, Pogi, Manipuda Lady, a police officer, Amasum, police personnel, Natraga Manipur Sarkada. Amasum Manipur ki lai riba state na Masi gumba sira makoi na ayi na hai na kauli basi Pharam me basi nga du karmai na phari bano Pharam me hai raga di khoi ki Sarkar ki prohibition department lai ri prohibition lai ri Hai da da bani makoi da Maduri si ki so and so sections matu ni na moi di phari Muna tau riba ofez muna tau riba kraim ado Masi ni serious oi na traga serious oi di Hai ba di Cognizable or in a drug known cognizable oi. Cognizable or among the fire adum, mandatory compulsory or in a cogi tauda yadra by fire of a pacatum to a Masi Supreme Court guidelines. The Pirabani, Karamba the Piri, Lalita Kumari versus Government of Uttar Pradesh 2014, the Supreme Court judgment. The Pirabani Mother, the Supreme Court guidelines for Lakana, a fire compulsory panadabani, Karibum of cognizable offense, the meme of Haragadi Hyden. Karigumen non cognizable offense or maba have been known serious serious yam oiram draga hat pogumba highway murder adugumba oiram draga di non serious oiram draga di adu di mang chung na magistrate adu ki order na draga warrant adu hanan dar ka tai hai basi ko ki criminal procedure court te mai ek chena e jana le ro court amane masi mai am je kang na kang na kang di hai tri ya roi manam di ain da Ainda ay khang de hai dana kota ay madu ki ainda khang hau dre ay madu khang de ay madu thena rakte hai ba masi gumba khang de ignorance of law is not an excuse in a courtroom hai dana asuke mati koi any student of law na draga lawyer na draga judges any man asu masi khang na le ro pas koi ki wakhalon amani si gumba principal asi khang na khang na khang de tati hai ra tati Madhu khangi na jab na ti tau ki hai na tau ni bani. Madhu varga di madhu rule of law ra. Rule of law na tre. Madhu rule of law oyam maga di pyramid ba procedures koi di IPC da na traga karam ba crime ma tau re. IPC ki karam ma section de ki matu na tau re ba crime ba kari paale no prosecution pi ni ba ta bani. Madhu kaane ko na defend tau gam ni. Adhe se koi ni yenga ni tau re ba phar ba police ba adhu criminal procedure adhu ki matu na chal ibra. Madhu, a quote criminal procedure court, Madhu in a cell libra, Satabra, Hibadu, Ado Hosiki Tabo, Asida D. Param Menga, Pukot Cray, Adu Kurler and Haler of Tadu Hay. Paramibadu, a rest of Libra, for illegal terminology, Hiraga, I and the Bidinga, Yingle Hiraga, Natra Naki or in a quickie, Tabu, Iran, Toloka, the Hari Naki or in a Adu Gitama talk the number either preventive detention, Hibana Tam Libra. Adu animal to Manu, the Amamu, Madu, Eregasu, Madu Kamhan Pamto, Eva Prosecution, 
prosecution na. Madu kanghan ni. Kanghan masuk tau de, kanghan dapat tau de, ay isamak ni kanghan de. Tapi tu bu lokap tu lagi tu satu sahaja. Nah, traga aku ini, uja head mistress, adu makoi tu di tak pihon kanghan pihon thok. Karena madu makoi dia hak ni makoi ni, makoi dia high bahaya tu si, aku dia rule dia ini dan ada yang mana ek aku ini ek sih. Masih dah tau riba si eres tau ramdren khalas si preventive detention tu tau ramdren khalas si. Adu orang ada di polis sing dengan sesat itu juga tahu itu kerigi nuah hai, kerigi nuah hai. Polis mana tahu itu kerana mana tahu nuah hai. Makoi nama tahu adu mai yang sena tahu mana tahu orang ada di kerigi kerana mana aing di matu ini tahu itu betul. Adu ga makoi nama kerigi kumpa areas tahu orang de preventive mitigation tahu orang de adu sesat orang ada mana di polis tu di jepsi dah hafal lab pula ada di sesat orang ada sahaja sing far orang ada lokap ta tu aku lagi lok ani ga lohnya na Punjal laga manunggu tu thamme masih kudi mak masih area sunat ti preventif detention sunat ti adu orang tu di koi di lokap bahaya sih bu ngahak sel orang tu koi ngahak thamu orang tu cagil ada mak thamni naga worry tau.